So um, I'd like to talk uh, a little bit about um, the Islamic Peace uh, Studies Initiative at the University of Michigan. Uh, and um, this is an initiative that was begun by myself and Samer Ali uh, at the Center for Middle East and North African Studies in 2016. On, um, the context of it, of course, uh, had been the long years of the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, so-called War on Terror, uh, the um, dramatic events of Al-Qaeda, and then uh, the rise of ISIL. Uh, and I and Samer felt that um, Islamic studies, uh, Middle Eastern studies, were being securitized uh, in unfortunate ways uh, without wanting to deny that, you know, extremism exists and has been a significant uh, factor, uh, we felt that um, uh, the emphasis on extremism was, was out of proportion to the reality. If one looked at the entirety of the Muslim world, other things were going on and have been going on for 1,400 years, uh, which were being ignored. Uh, so we proposed to our International Institute uh, an Islamic Peace Studies initiative uh, to promote academic research on this subject uh, and uh, to promote the professionalization and recognition of, of this subfield. Um, so we did a literature search at Index Islamicus uh, on uh, using the search terms Islam and Peace, Boolean search, and we came up with about 77 articles. Uh, index Islamicus tries to index everything written in European languages about Islam uh, uh, since um, 1500. There are thousands and thousands of entries. Uh, so even if you know the search was in, in some way inadequate or there are other, other search terms that might have been more fruitful, uh, we can see that this is a neglected subject. Uh, in uh, uh, European language research. Um, and um, I, as far as I can tell, uh, the International Journal of Peace Studies, which is the foremost journal in the field uh, at George Mason University, uh, seems to have published few or, or no articles on Islam. Maybe some articles set in Muslim societies, but uh, not in Islam per se. Um, so in contrast to this dearth of work on Islam and peace, uh, peace studies itself as an academic field uh, has become well established over the years. Uh, in some ways it began uh, in 1955 uh, when uh, Johann Galtung became the chair in peace studies at the University of Oslo. And by now, uh, there are 150 colleges and universities just in the United States that offer courses in the area of peace studies. And peace studies is very broadly conceived and, and uh, diverse. There's political philosophy of peace, there's security studies, uh, practical conflict resolution. Um, and the religious dimension of peace studies has been important uh, a, a lot of peace studies programs are housed at uh, denominational institutions, uh, the Kroc uh, Institute at, uh, for Peace Studies at Notre Dame uh, is an example, but Haverford and, you know, traditionally Mennonite and, and Quaker uh, peace church uh, institutions often have peace studies. Uh, of course, secular institutions do as well. There's been a fair amount of work on, on uh, peace and, and Christianity, uh, peace and Buddhism. Uh, so uh, religion as a uh, dimension of this subject is well recognized, but again, uh, not with regard on the whole to Islam. Uh, so we uh, held, uh, we, we got funded uh, very, uh, the, the International Institute was very kind to, to give us uh, funding. And we went forward with our first uh, Peace and Islam conference in Ann Arbor uh, in March of 2017. Uh, and uh, I'm, I won't read out the program for you, but just uh, I've put up uh, the participants so that you get an, an idea of the diversity of them and their subject matter. Um, we uh, 
I should mention uh, that I was concerned that the uh, subject should be treated in the context of the global Muslim world. Uh, and so Africa has been an important site uh, for peace uh, studies within Islam. Uh, and we that was well represented. Uh, and um, we didn't want to uh, make the mistake of essentializing Sufism as always about peace, because of course there has been militant Sufism, uh, but we did want to have a, a, a paper on that. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, Sherman Jackson gave us a paper uh, on, on fundamentalists, on, on the fundamentalist turn towards peace uh, in Egypt uh, after the 1990s. Uh, and, um, and, and we looked at Salafism and, and, and the early Salafis like Rashid Rida in this context. Uh, so um, I should mention also that we did get some critiques and, and uh, um, some, uh, some nervousness about this project was expressed by some people. Some of our invitees turned us down because they couldn't quite figure out what we were about. And my guess is that, you know, the U.S. government has a, a program uh, in the Homeland Security Department uh, on, on countering violent extremism, uh, which has gotten a bad name, I think, in the American Muslim community uh, as kind of Islamophobic and as, as a uh, brainwashing operation of the U.S. government. Uh, and we don't have anything to do with the uh, CVE and uh, haven't taken money from the U.S. government. And, uh, 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 but I, I suspect that uh, some of the nervousness about, uh, about countering violent extremism made people a little bit suspicious of why were we focusing on this subject. And uh, Abdullah, Abdullahi Ahmed and Naim, uh, who gave our keynote at the first conference, also included some critiques of the project uh, that he was afraid that, you know, it would become kind of paternalistic, uh, that uh, uh, I guess white people showing Muslims how to uh, uh, make peace and, and so forth. And again, I, I hope you can see from the NBT list that uh, this was not our intention. Uh, we wanted to have uh, scholars of Muslim heritage prominently uh, represented uh, in this project and, um, uh, to have a good mix of people. Uh, and and, and our, as we conceived our project, it was an intellectual uh, and, and uh, um, academic uh, program. So I assured Abdullahi, Abdullahi, we have no intention of trying to train, you know, uh, peace negotiators or, or, or that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, in 2019, uh, in the spring, we had a, a second conference, this time, uh, less sociological and more concentrating on the inner life of, uh, uh, of Islam and Muslims and uh, looking at uh, a peace and serenity as a value. Uh, and um, uh, again, uh, tried to have a, a diverse a set of, uh, of respondents. Uh, and our keynote that year was uh, uh, Dr. Irfan Omar of Marquette University. Um, and um, uh, so ultimately, these two conferences and our other activities uh, uh, culminated in a, a book, Peace Movements in Islam, which was just published in December of 2021 by Ivy Torres uh, uh, Bloomsbury, um, who I think may be at your conference. Uh, and. Um, the referees for the book, uh, we got three long referee reports, were very enthusiastic about it. And one of them uh, said that uh, they felt that the book could be potentially field forming. Now, I know that there are other teams and other scholars working on this subject uh, throughout the world. Uh, and uh, um, Asma Saradin uh, at uh, Indiana University at Bloomington has been one, and she kindly contributed uh, a chapter to our book, uh, and, and there are others. Um, but, um, uh, and, and there have been a few other uh, uh, such compilations or, 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 or anthologies. Uh, uh, Wadad Qadi did one around 2010 with the U.S. Institute of Peace. 
so it's not unprecedented. I don't want to make uh, undue claims for it. Uh, but I, I think it, it, it may be the first um, thoroughgoing project of this sort to resort, resort in a, a book which is theorizing the possibility of a subfield of Islamic peace studies. Uh, and uh, again, uh, many of our contributors uh, were of Muslim heritage, uh, and we tried to address a wide range of phenomena. Senegal is there, Bosnia is there, India is there. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. And I, I, gave, I, I uh, included a paper of my own uh, looking at peace verses in the Quran, uh, which uh, are, are numerous and I believe have been under-theorized in, in the field. Uh, and of course, I used many of these in my own monograph in 2018 on Muhammad as a prophet of peace uh, amid the clash of empires. Uh, but I... Uh, in this, in that book, I, I used them, you know, for writing the bio biography of the prophet. In this essay, I focused in on the Quran itself uh, and and uh, didn't try to do a more analytical uh, study. And again, uh, as as Abdul Hassan rightly said, you can let the Quran comment on itself. Uh, try to look at at how the verses interplay with one another. Uh, and I make an argument that, that peace is absolutely central. A peace and conciliation and peacemaking are absolutely central to the Quran. And that even in the Medina, per Medina period, where you have verses about uh, just war, what I consider to be verses about just war, uh, an emphasis on ultimate conciliation continues uh, in, in that period uh, as well. Uh, so, um, uh, I, I thank you for letting me give you this little uh, overview of, of our project and, and, uh, and the book that, uh, that resulted. And I think the best uh, use of our time here is if I uh, uh, open for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Cole. We actually have a flyer for your book here at the conference. Uh, and I think while is at also online, people could get the code if they'd like to purchase the book.